Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture three of the lecture series on educational theoretical perspectives. I'm Dr. Sonia Khan and in this lecture I will discuss Vygotsky's concept of zone of proximal development. The zone of proximal development helps us in understanding the relation between instruction and development. Or one can say it helps in understanding the relation between instruction and learning, both of which are prerequisites for development. Now, what do I mean by this statement is that in a teaching learning situation, a teacher can visualize the stages of child's mental development. However, he or she cannot see that development happening there and then when they're teaching the subject content. Let's take an example of gardening. What a gardener does is affects germination of seeds. A gardener can foresee the stages of plant development long before he sees a seed grow into a plant. So the focus is to create situations or environment for the seed to develop into a plant. For example, the gardener might try to regulate the moisture or select and mix soils and fertilizers for its growth. So similarly, in a teaching learning situation, what a teacher does is impacts learning through instruction. A teacher can assess where the learner is in his or her learning. They can create possibilities to maximize students' learning, but they cannot see development taking place there and then. Let's look into the definition of zone of proximal development. Vygotsky defines a child's ZPD as the distance between actual developmental level as determined by independent problem solving and the level of potential development as determined through problem solving under adult guidance or in collaboration with more capable peers. Now let's try to deconstruct this definition. Let's look at the words distance between actual developmental level and the level of potential development. Now, how do we know at which level is the child? He uses the term determined. That means it requires some form of assessment. So actual developmental level is determined by independent problem solving. That is when a child is able to solve problems without any support, unaided. And potential developmental level is determined through problem solving under adult guidance or in collaboration with more capable peers. Now, when a child is given support, at what level is the child able to solve tasks? That defines his level of potential development. That means with support. Another thing to understand here is, what does Vygotsky mean when he says developmental level? He's referring to the mental age of the child. For example, if a 10 year old child solves problem at an eight year old old's level, then his actual developmental level is eight years old. Now, if the same child deals with problems up to nine year olds level. Then this is his proximal development. This is his potential development. That means that the distance between the two levels is one year. If the same child again under adult guidance is able to solve problems up to a level of 12 year old child, 
then the zone of proximal development this distance becomes four years now why Gotsky suggested to take these distances into account when uh, forming classes or forming uh, uh, or grouping students in schools however that's not very feasible so in schools you might have noticed that students are grouped according to their biological age and they are required to learn scientific concepts appropriate to their age. Now who decides these concepts and whether at what age these concepts are appropriate to learn? This decision is taken by intellectual communities such as universities. These universities send guidelines to the state. The state then sends curriculum to the schools. And the school then provides scheme of work, also known as syllabus in some countries, to teachers. And then these teachers or teachers, they teach academic concepts in the form of themes, topics, or problems. So this is what happens in ZPD. So teachers in teaching their the, the scientific concepts to students um, try to create possibilities for students learning through instruction and in that instruction there are two things that are key according to this definition one thing that one needs to keep in mind is the reference to development here according to Vygotsky the development is a mediated process I had explained this in now uh, my first lecture so mediated process means it requires human mediation plus symbolic mediation that is the teacher and peers here and symbolic are the tools which can be tasks that teacher assigns the instruction that teacher gives I will write this there because I think it's becoming too much here. So instruction. Instruction comes in the form of language, definitely. So these are the tools or even material tools. Can use any of these. This helps in merging the spontaneous and scientific concepts and also this helps in bringing higher mental functioning. That means these teachers help in creating some kind of link, an external link to start the thinking process or the remembering process. And by doing so, second important thing that these teachers do is, sorry, that the teachers do is, they merge the understanding of spontaneous and scientific concepts. So just to refresh your memory, let me briefly discuss scientific concepts. These concepts have higher abstraction, generality, and their relationship to objects is mediated through other concepts. 
That means these concepts are highly coherent and have a logical hierarchical system. Say for example, in year seven, students learn about finding properties of angles at point. They learn about reflection and symmetry. They learn about coordinates. Then when they move to year eight, they learn about finding areas of shapes like trapezium, circle, or learning about finding surface area of solids. And then when they move to maybe at the end of the same year or maybe next year, then they learn about um, volumes of more complex shapes. So there is logical hierarchical system. One concept helps in understanding the other concept then and so on. So the point I'm trying to make here is that in school age, students are regularly challenged to reach higher abstraction. That is new formation. They learn new concepts, more challenging concepts. And as a result of that, they have to reorganize their understanding or their thinking of the concepts that they've already learned and adjust that thinking in relation to the new concepts that they're learning. So that means in that situation, a child also faces contradiction in his or her own learning. And it is in this contradiction that learning takes place. So according to Vygotsky, crisis is important, is a necessary element for learning to take place. And with this, I will come to the conclusion of this lecture on the zone of proximal development and would want you to consider why Vygotsky matters. Vygotsky does not provide any rigid prescription of teaching and learning. All he proposes is the ways to think about how teaching and learning might be mediated. He helps in understanding that the process of development requires unity of inside and outside. It requires unity of mental and material, of social and personal, which means that there has to be some form of social interaction in the class. In, in learning for a learner to think against. And also it requires symbolic mediation in the form of tasks, language used by the teacher to help students think about the concepts that they're learning. And other thing that Vygotsky offers is the foundation for further research to expand its domain from micro to macro discourse processes and activity systems. And in my next lecture, I will discuss this concept of activity systems in detail. So till then, have a wonderful time. I hope you have enjoyed my lecture. And if you have, please subscribe my channel and uh, spread the word, share the videos with others and ask others also to subscribe this channel. Thank you.